How's it going everyone? My name is Matt Layton and welcome back to another real estate video. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the top five real estate apps to use when you're looking to purchase a house. My current phone is a Samsung Galaxy Note 9, which means yes, I am on an Android and yes, the chat bubbles are green. So hopefully we can get past the color of a text bubble and you don't judge me too much as we take a look at these apps. Thankfully, all the apps that we're gonna be looking at are available on both the App Store as well as the Google Play Store. We're gonna be looking at the top five real estate apps and the app that didn't make the cut that maybe some people still use is Trulia. Guys, Trulia is just like Zillow except not as good. Very, very similar, almost the same data. Zillow bought Trulia a few years ago and there's no real reason to use Trulia in my opinion. Maybe the only reason that Trulia would stand out is because they have information on crime maps, uh, really good school information and, and demographic information, but you gotta think, okay, crime, schools, and people, these aren't really real estate, housing, this, this isn't helpful to purchase a house. There's better resources to figure out about crime in schools than a real estate app, so that's why Trulia didn't make the cut this time. The first app that we're gonna be looking at, guys, and in my opinion, the fifth best real estate app on the market right now is the Realtor.com app. So let's get into the app right now, and the first thing I don't like about the Realtor.com app is it is not pleasant on the eyes. When I open up the app and start at a very large bird's eye view, this is not a very helpful screen. Each of these dots represent one new listing, but when I zoom in, there's obviously more listings that weren't shown when I was zoomed out, so I'm not really sure how those properties get chosen to show up, and you know some get don't get chosen to, to show up. Usually what apps do, and what I would prefer, is if you are so far away like this, you click the dot, and it says, oh yeah, 200 listings in this vicinity. I feel like I have to keep zooming in on one area to kind of realize how many listings are in that vicinity. I see one dot, but when I zoom in, I, I see a bunch more, and that's kind of kind of confuses me as a consumer. The second thing I don't like about the Realtor.com app is I did notice some accuracy issues as I started looking at listings. Let's take, for example, this house here. The address is North Carlin Springs Road, but it says it's located on North Thomas Street. Now, this isn't something where the pin is actually 100 feet away and they just missed it. This location is significantly wrong. In fact, when we look at it on Google Street View, we are literally in a Harris Teeter parking lot. Guys, it says the new construction home is in the Harris Teeter parking lot. That's not a good thing. Now, sometimes agents mess up when they upload the listing to the MLS, the pin goes in the wrong spot, but that's not the case here. As we open up the HomeSnap app, we can see that HomeSnap has correctly listed this property where it belongs on North Carlin Springs Road. Once we actually get into the Realtor.com app, what I do like is you can immediately see the 3D tour. I like how it's front and center. Even if these 3D tours make you dizzy, I would prefer to have it easily available rather than to bury it somewhere in the description or to not have a 3D tour at all. As we start going through the listing, I do like how the app has pictures where you can swipe right or left, and it even has description of the pictures, so if I just wanna to jump to the kitchen, or if I just wanna see the living room or something like that, I can easily do that without too much hassle or without too much scrolling. I do like how you have all the information at the top of the app. You can see the description without too much scrolling. I don't think this open house section needs to be here. I feel like the default setting for open houses should be no open houses, and then if there is an open house, you just have a little mark or you know text over the picture. I feel like that's a lot of real estate to take up to show that there's no open house. Okay, so there's some pros and some cons. Guys, let me give you three reasons why you should never use the realtor.com app. Wow, that escalated quickly. Number one is they don't show condo fees. I will repeat that. The Realtor.com app does not show condo fees. Condo fees are vital for buyers looking to purchase a condo. Let's take, for example, this condo in Old Town Alexandria at Abingdon Row. Nowhere in the app does it show the condo fee. The HOA fee, it shows $0 per month. Now, did the agent make a mistake when they entered in the property to the MLS? Let's double check. We pull it up on Zillow. And when we do, we see that right there, the condo fee is listed at 475 per month. So clearly the agent entered the property incorrectly. The realtor.com app just doesn't show the condo fee. Guys, this cannot happen in a real estate app in 2020. The second reason why the realtor.com app is not worth your time is because they show contingent properties when you're searching for active properties. So when you're looking for a house, you want that house to be available, right? Well, there's nothing more frustrating 
then searching for active properties only to find contingent properties show up. Contingent pending, that means the same thing. It means the seller has accepted an offer and the home is not available. And when we search for active properties on the realtor.com app, you can see some of the properties here are active and some are contingent. That's extremely frustrating. It looks like all these properties are active when in fact they are not. How about removing those properties or even changing the color of the properties? But instead of changing the colors or just removing those properties altogether, those contingent properties show up next to the active properties. Guys, that is not good. And the third reason why you should never use the realtor.com app is because the app does not show virtual tours. Let's take, for example, this property at Commonwealth Ave. I'm gonna open up the property on the Zillow app and once I scroll all the way down, we'll get into how hard this virtual tour is to find. I will find that virtual tour link right here. I can click on the virtual tour. A video pops up. Looks like it was raining that day. I can click on the video, start the video. There you have it, virtual tour. As a side note, guys, I wanna make a meme where it says slideshows are not virtual tours. Prove me wrong. I'm so glad that this agent has an actual video, guys. Don't use slideshows in 2020, you're better than that. Getting back on track, when we do load up the realtor.com app and we pull up the listing for Commonwealth, I will literally look everywhere, up, down, left, right. I'm just not gonna be able to find the virtual tour because it does not show up in the app. The bottom line for the realtor.com app is they don't show condo fees, they don't show virtual tours, and then they show contingent properties when you're searching for active properties. Guys, it's because of these three reasons that the realtor.com app is the fifth best app in the lineup and there's really no reason to have it on your phone. Coming in at number four is the Compass Real Estate app. Guys, Compass is a brokerage and they also have a real estate app. And I'll just tell you up front, some of these apps may or may not be available in your specific marketplace. I know Compass has some 20, 20, 20 vision where they wanna be in 20 cities by 2020 and have 20% of the market share or something to that nature. And I was excited to try the Compass app because if you remember from a previous video I did on the best real estate apps, the Compass app was not available for the Android system. Unfortunately, they don't have an Android application. It's too bad there's only 1.4 billion people that use Android. So I'm glad they decided to hop on the Android train and I'm excited to take a look at the app. One of the best things that Compass had was Compass coming soon listings. Guys, I'm talking in the past tense because a lot of things are changing with the Compass coming soon listings. And this used to be a huge competitive advantage for Compass and it's, it's pretty much gone away now. So Compass is a brokerage that has a lot of really good agents in a lot of big markets. And one of the things that they touted was, hey, we're Compass, we have listings that nobody else has, come use our app and use our agents. So buyers were like, you're telling me you got 20% of the listings that aren't on the MLS? Yeah, let's use this app. Then the MLS said, no, 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 sweetie, you can't create your own MLS. So you may still see some Compass coming soon listings, but nowhere near to the extent of where they were a year or even two years ago. The main benefit of the Compass app is it's so incredibly easy to use. The design is sleek, very intuitive, very clean, minimalist design. You can tell that they've put a lot of money into the app and it's extremely user friendly. All right, let's just get into the features now. And when we open up a property, you can see a very clean look. There's not too many crazy colors going on here, just black and white. You have all the information towards the top. I would probably prefer if the description was before the listing agent's name. That's kind of like saying the consumer would rather see the real estate agent than the property description. I personally think those two should be flipped. Another thing I love about the Compass app is it cleanly displays the amenities for the property, especially with condos. Some apps just copy and paste the format directly from the MLS. So it's a little bit harder to read, but with the Compass app, it lays out the amenities in two columns, so it's much easier for the user. You also have a feature called collections, where you can add properties to a group and save them for later. I'm not sure how beneficial it is since most properties in my area sell very quickly. I created a collection called Other People's Properties where I added a few properties to it because by the time I go back and look at those properties or review them, someone's already gonna buy them because the market moves so quickly, but maybe I could see the benefit if you're in a much slower market or if you need to go back and view a certain house for whatever reason. Another small thing that I'm wondering about is when you click on a Compass listing, you see the agent's face, but when you click on a listing that's not listed by Compass, you don't see the agent's face. And there's no way for me as a non-Compass agent to upload my pretty mugshot to the Compass app. And I know that's not really the biggest of deals at the end of the day, but 
if you're the compass development team and if you're a consumer would you rather see a face or no face at all i think it'd be a better user experience if other agents were allowed to upload their photo into the compass app overall there are three main reasons why i would not recommend the compass app number one is you can't see all the listings if you are using the compass real estate app to buy a house you're not going to be able to see all the listings available for sale the reason being is because for sale by owners individuals looking to sell their house without an agent well those individuals they need to upload their property manually and where are they going to do that they're going to do it on those sites that get the most amount of traffic and compass well they're just not big enough so those for sale by owners well they're going to go to bigger places like redfin or to zillow to list their property so we can see here this property is clearly listed for sale on redfin.com but when we come over to the compass app it is nowhere to be found the second reason i don't recommend the compass app is because you actually can't click on the virtual tour links this one still confuses me to this date guys so compass actually does a good job of including the virtual tour some apps don't even include that so when they include the virtual tour link they include the entire url so you can try to click on it but it's not hyperlinked there's no way to actually click on it and I guess you could search in front of your computer and then type that URL out into your computer. But at that point, why aren't you just searching on your computer? You would think for a brokerage that focuses on technology, they would have figured out how to make a link that's clickable. We're a technology company, but ooh, having a link that's clickable. That's a tough one. Maybe during the next round of private funding, they can figure out how to make a virtual tour clickable. And the third reason that Compass comes in fourth place is because, well, there's just not a lot of data in the Compass app. Even in the realtor.com app, you're able to zoom into an area and click on properties that are not on the market to learn more about the neighboring properties and their values. When you zoom in on the Compass app, well, nothing comes up. There's no information on those properties. Now, you can always go into your search, search for properties that have sold or under contract, but that still doesn't tell the whole picture. There's always gonna be homes that don't show up on that list because maybe the house is now expired or the listing was canceled, so it's not sold, it's not under contract, but you still wanna know what they tried to sell their house for. This information is not included on the Compass app. When you compare to other apps like HomeSnap, Zillow, Realtor.com, you're gonna get a lot more information about off-market properties. Overall, Compass has a very sleek design, very cool app, very easy to use, but these drawbacks are just a little bit too much for me to include it in my regular rotation of real estate apps that I use. The app that comes in third place on my list is HomeSnap. And guys, it pains me to put HomeSnap this low on my list because if you were to ask me, Matt, if you could only use one real estate app for the rest of your life, what would it be? Well, I would tell you HomeSnap. So then why isn't it higher on this list? Well, if this video were titled, what is the best real estate app for real estate agents? I would tell you HomeSnap because that's how it got its start. It started by building those relationships with the MLS and it started going after the real estate agent first and then going after the consumer second where these other apps are more consumer driven. We're gonna get into the app now and the biggest benefit of the HomeSnap app is it will have a tremendous amount of data both on the home, neighboring properties and sold properties and it's extremely easy to find this information. However, the biggest downside is it's just not very user friendly. So let's load up a listing here and right from the start, an automatic slideshow starts playing. I didn't ask for this slideshow to start playing. I can't control the speed of the slideshow and the pictures seem to be cropped in so it doesn't show the whole frame. And in order to see the full picture, you actually have to click on the photo and then that brings up all the photos and then you have to actually press the back button to go back to see all the information. That's just a lot of work just to see the photos on my own terms. I would much rather prefer the options in the previous apps that we've seen where you simply just swipe left and right and you don't have to click and enter in and have all the pictures pop up. I like having just swipe left and right and scroll up and down. As we start scrolling and scrolling, well, scrolling may be the theme of HomeSnap, the first thing that we see is the property history and HomeSnap does not hold back with the amount of information it has on the property. If it was up to me, I may actually want to read the property description before learning about all the price drops and the times they rented the property. Not a big deal, but you can see with this property specifically, there's a lot of activity and it takes a lot of scrolling to actually see the property description. The biggest issue I have with HomeSnap is the amount of scrolling it takes to actually find the information that you're looking for. Do you remember when we looked at the Compass app and we saw those amenities and they were neatly laid out? Well, in the HomeSnap app, it kind of just looks like they copy and pasted the exact information 
from the MLS including the format and it's just not that easy to read. One of the big benefits and reasons I love HomeSnap is because of all the data it has on the surrounding houses. You can easily zoom into an area and see the homes that are under contract or that have sold recently. In some other apps like Realtor.com, it was hard to decipher which properties had sold and which were still active. One of the main reasons that HomeSnap does not rank higher is because it's kind of difficult to see HOA fees and condo fees. They're in the app, but you have to do so much scrolling to finally pull up the HOA fees. And then once you find them, you know, your thumb just did a workout and you're just tired of hunting for the fees. You would think since HOA fees and condo fees are so important to the buyer that they would just have them in a prominent position. In the future, I hope that HomeSnap changes the location of the HOA and condo fees and moves them a lot higher because it's so frustrating to having to scroll down, click a button, do some more scrolling to finally find those HOA fees. Overall, Homestep has the potential to be the best app on the list, but because of how difficult it is for the user to actually use the app, it checks in at number three. Moving on to number two, and the second best app is Zillow. And by all accounts, Zillow is the most popular app, but I don't feel like they're the best app. And let me tell you why. First, when you load up the app, it's almost like having two different apps. You have the pictures up here and you have the info down here. And when you pull up the info, you can't really see the pictures anymore. And that's more of a personal preference for me, but I like having the idea of looking at the pictures and the information at the same exact time. And when you are looking at the pictures, sometimes the map shows up right here. Sometimes it doesn't show up. Sometimes it shows up at the bottom. It's not really universal across all of the properties for sale. So I'd like to see a little bit more consistency with the location of the map feature. Once we're actually looking at the info, I like the overall presentation of the app. I like that you can easily see how long it's been on Zillow. And I like that you can see the number of times it's been viewed and the number of times it's been saved. That's something that we haven't seen in any of the other apps that we've looked at. That tells me the popularity and I think that's a really cool feature. What I don't like is you have to scroll all the way down and then click on a button to actually see the virtual tour. Why not have the virtual tour higher or at least in the same section as the photos? Zillow also allows properties to have a video walkthrough feature which I think has the potential to be really cool. But the problem with the video walkthrough is the only way to upload the video is through the Zillow Premier Agent app on your phone or tablet. This means that you can't record a professional quality video and then have that as the video walkthrough. You can't upload files. So what ends up happening is you have these really nice properties with video walkthroughs done on cell phones that maybe aren't the best quality. It would be a lot better for the consumer if agents were to upload video files to the Premier Agent app so the quality of that video walkthrough tour would get a lot better. Another negative about the video walkthrough feature is that it's buried in the app. It's not easy to find. In order to find it, you have to scroll all the way down to the bottom of the pictures to get the video. If you have something so valuable like a video walkthrough of a property, well, that actually encourages the user to stay on the app for longer. Isn't that what Zillow wants, to stay on the app for as long as possible? So then why hide it at the very bottom? That should be displayed a lot more prominently to encourage the user to click on the video, watch the video, and to stay on the Zillow app for as long as possible. Now, the biggest benefit of the Zillow app is they have the most data. They have so much consumer data in the app, it's actually kind of scary how much data that they have. However, if I wanna zoom in and see properties that recently sold or that are pending, it can be very hard to interpret the data that's showing up. I see the recent solds, but I'm not sure about the pending sales and it's not a good looking interface. Overall, I really like the Zillow app and I use the app quite frequently, but it's the third app that I use. I like Zillow better from a consumer standpoint than HomeSnap, but I like HomeSnap better from a real estate agent standpoint. And by far the biggest issue with Zillow continues to be accuracy. And I'm not talking about the Zestimate where it gives you the approximate value of the property. I'm more so talking about the properties that are listed as active on Zillow when in reality they're actually pending. Let's take for example this listing. It says active in Zillow. I come over to HomeSnap and we see it is contingent. It's extremely frustrating for consumers and it wastes everyone's time. My clients, they send me Zillow listings and I have to email them back saying that the property is no longer available. Zillow definitely needs to figure out their accuracy issue and they definitely need to find a way to update their database a lot quicker. Zillow still has all the data and they have their iBuyer program Zillow offers in some markets and headed to other markets. So I think consumers will still use the Zillow app 
However, I do think there's a better app available. And the best real estate app on the market right now is Redfin. Redfin is a discount brokerage that also has a real estate app and it is the best app for one main reason. It has the best user experience. It's simple, when you're on the Redfin app, you want to stay on the Redfin app. It's clean, it's not cluttered, and when you load up a property, all the information is right there. Guys, I say this and Redfin is a direct competitor. They're actually trying to eliminate the real estate agent. However, I love their real estate app. As we take a look at the app, it has all of the information front and center. The Redfin app came before the Compass app and the Compass app looks very similar. It's kind of like when you're in elementary school and you tell your buddy, yeah, copy my homework, but you know, make it look a little bit different. When we scroll down, we see the most important information first. So this is a townhouse. We have the HOA fees displayed in this first section. No extra clicks and not too much scrolling to find these fees. One thing I wouldn't pay too much attention to is the Redfin estimate graph. It's cool to look at and see how the values change, but come on, did this property really drop in value by $200,000 in one year in the hottest real estate market in the country? Probably not. The Redfin estimates and the Zillow's estimates are fun toys. They're cool to look at, they're cool to play with, but you shouldn't take them too seriously. Another feature that Redfin has is the hot home feature. A home gets this tag when a bunch of people click on this listing, and then Redfin shows that it's a popular property. Now, I'm not quite sure how the algorithm works, but I know when I have a listing, what I do is I click on my listing, close the app, click on my listing again, close it. I like to try to manipulate the algorithm just a little bit. I don't know if it actually does anything, but when I see that hot home, above my listing well it's kind of cool and i think as a consumer it would make you want to click on that property compared to just a listing that didn't have that tag one feature that i wish would be more utilized is the tour insights if you're a redfin agent and you tour the property you have the opportunity to leave your feedback i don't think it's of great value right now because usually the comments end up being something very basic that is not much help so this one says two bed two bath open layout with view of the monument well, when I look at the pictures, I can see it's two bedrooms. Uh, you know, I can see it has hardwood floors and I can see the monument. So there's not too much value there right now. Hopefully over time, these comments will be more true to their name and be a little bit more insightful than what they are right now. Overall, the reason that Redfin takes a top spot is because it's easy to use, it's accurate, and it has a lot of data. And if you're a real estate app, you need all three of these things. Every other app that's not number one, you know, maybe they weren't easy to use, Maybe they didn't have all the properties or maybe they weren't accurate. Guys, Redfin has all three of these things and that is why it is my favorite real estate app to use. There you have it guys, the top apps for buying a house in 2020. I know personally, I use the Redfin app, I use the HomeSnap app and then I cross-reference those with Zillow. But let me know in the comment section below if you're like a Trulia fan or if you really like the Compass app or something like that. I'd like to know which app you're using. Let me know in the comment section below guys. I really appreciate you watching this video. If you learned anything, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and I'll see you in the next one. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, create a productive day. Take care.